Hey guys, all right, here, here's something I can show you um, that is in, in the same um, line of thinking of every every pivot, every swing, we're trying to analyze it to, to see what kind of confidence we can put into it as to whether or not it fits with all the components that we look for to establish a pivot, that being price, pattern, uh, a time component, uh, the the, the the look of it, do we have the right proportion that we'd like to see? Do we have multiple swings giving us a confluence to suggest that we have a potential pivot in? So it, th this is kind of an interesting one. So this is uh, this is Dash against the dollar on Poloniex. Now, Dash, uh, I'm very bullish long-term on Dash. I love their story. I think they're going to be a major crypto in the future. And they've been, uh, the, the market has been trading with uh, remarkable technical precision. But it's gotten difficult as we've gone into this uh, current retracement, right? So we've got we've gone into complexity here, and we're trying to get a handle on, you know, where we get a good pivot to work from, looking for an impulsive move to start. Because if indeed, as I have it labeled here, this is a one, which we are leaning towards due to the nice five wave subdivision that we got on this move out of this very clear ABC. If we're going to put in a one and this long, convoluted, complex two over here, which is still it still has potential because here's our swing low to high. We're still, you know, we, we're we're through the 65. We're above the 786, and we've got targets, you know, much much higher up here. I've got targets on a larger time frame. If you go out to an eight hour, that go you know up to 800 and above. So we, we're looking for opportunities to get long. Well, one thing that we can see here. If, looking here on an hourly is that we put in a double bottom down here. Now a double bottom is potentially a bullish signal as the market is trying to get to new lows. Short sellers want to see that. The fact that it's rejected tells us, you know, maybe take a closer look at this. So let me let me get um, zoomed in on this so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, so I, I've made the point that, that here from our swing low to our one high, which potentially is our one high, we, we're still above the 786. We know a two wave can go to the 786. So still a contender for this third wave. This time relationship is a little bit troubling. If we consider the length of time in wave one compared to wave two, that's a bit troubling. That's a red flag. I will acknowledge that. But we do get this very nice subdivision and we get a, a, a WXY, which again, not, not complicated. It's just connecting to ABC. So here's our first ABC. We get the X wave and then we go into a much larger ABC. So can we evaluate this pivot as a contender? So let's, let's, let's zoom in on it and, and take a look. So from that swing, you, and you can see it went right to our little pocket that we love. So right from the 61865, right where you'd expect it. So we go right right to that high. So that's our where we got our A wave, right? Our B wave down here and we put in the C right right in the pocket. So now we've come down and we've sub we've had this subdivision down into an ending diagonal, which we would expect in a fifth or a C wave. And you can see it here. So if, if this is our B, we're looking for five wave subdivision into our fifth. And we get a nice one, two, three, four, down to a five. And now we've put in a double bottom. Well, let's see if we can start to build a case for that as a low. So of course, just, just keeping it simple. If I go from my low here, from my one high to my, to my three low, Right. Well, here's my here's my 50. Here's my 618. Well, we wick through it. We get a few wicks through it, the Vegas wave, but then we, we then we you know start to roll over and come back down. So here's our negative 23 target. We're we're two and through by by a few bucks. So that that target has been realized. Well, we also want to consider if we go. Well, let's see. Yes. If I go from high to low. Okay, well, that, you know, so this, these are the resistance points coming back the other direction. So let's, let's consider additional pivots. So from this swing to our three, we get two and through the 618, on, uh, six, five on some wicks, but then we come back down, we get this target. So actually, I'm trying, in the interest of building a case, I'm going to leave that up. So we get that one. We've got this one. 
we, we want to consider price projections, the alternate tool. So I would go from my absolute high up here to my three low, which is, was the common relationship in a diagonal. I pull that up to my four. Well, we're a little shy of the of the 100%. I'd want to look at that relationship here from the two to the four. Now you see that now I get the 100% right in here in this, in this cluster area. So I've got a few contenders. Now I would additionally, given that I've got this kind of channeling action here, want to put that on it. All right, so we're, you know, we're close. I, I like it a little bit better, but the fact that I've had this double bottom makes me want to look at this a little bit more closely. So I've got a fairly good cluster happening down here of targets. And then we additionally have this 618, which I need to get back to show you. So if I look here, if I wiggle it, you see that? Okay, so I'm going from my from my X wave high down for the length of A, projecting from B, and I wiggle it there. You see the 618 of that move sits right here, this gold line, right in the pocket. So I'm getting one, two, three, four, four fib relationships clustering there, plus I've now just put in a double bottom. All right, so yeah, there's some resistance to get through on the way up, but we're trying to evaluate if potentially we could have a pivot in here, which stays consistent with our upside targets, which we have, which are you know much much higher. So, you know, for, first one being off of the 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 wave one here, staying above the seven eight six, which is here in blue. That negative twenty three target is up here at four oh four. So enormous upside potential. Now, the one other thing I want to show you, given this this tight little box that we have here, I'm going to take the take the channel off. So w of course, when you have pivots like this, we'd want to be considering we'd want to be considering pitchforks to see if we can get any clues about. Uh, tags of the median line or weakness in getting to the median line. So one thing that is very consistent with pitchforks is that if you don't make the median line on on these on these tests to come down and catch it, it creates the energy for this to be moving back much further the other direction. It's it's actually called the Hagopian rule from a from a Dr. Hagopian who was one of Andrew's students. So this the, the failure here to reach the median line creates energy potential for this to go to and through and exceed this distance here. So we we create the energy potential for this to go to and through the pitchfork and then you know start to approach some of our upside targets the other thing that I want to show you is why you you, you know again in the interest of tr always trying to look at the puzzle pieces we want to consider all of the major pivots so looking at this we can see well we've got some dominant pivots so of course I want to look at those and e even though your instincts might be that these are too far gone you absolutely want to consider them so there's our there's our traditional pitchfork, and you say, okay, well, this is way, we're, we're way outside of this. But as I was showing you earlier, when that's the case, you want to also consider the other variations on the pitchfork to see if any of those are coming into play. So I'll take this off to the side so you can see it. So the first thing I'm going to do is check the shift. Now look at that. Do you see that? Do you see where that went? Do you see this median line here? So all that is, this is the length from this swing high to this swing low. It comes down 50%. That's the shift pitchfork to the tick, to the tick. Okay, so the, the idea being that we have a, a fairly substantial confluence of data here and swing relationships to suggest that we may have a hard low here we may have a hard low. So if you're looking to be a buyer here, well, so you could, you could, I got to blow it up a little bit so you can see it better down here. So let me bring this up. So if indeed we have, we, you know, this little box is going to play for us. Well, of course, as I'll, you know, always encourage you to consider one, one is to wait for this to get some sort of impulsive movement. If we're going to go up, we got to we got to get through the the median line and then l let that show itself, and then wait for the first retracement on the assumption that we have a good pivot here based on that huge confluence of of indicators telling us that potentially 
all the components that we look for, pattern, price, time, all those relationships are, are in play and that we may have the start of what we hope to be a, a large impulsive structure to give us those upside targets. But you know, it, it, I mean, you, you could. I mean, it's already starting to move fairly well. So it, within the box, we split the box. That's 263, and you know, we're now pushing 273. So we're getting some good signs of it. You don't get, you know, enough subdivision here. So, you know, if you if you go back out in time and start to look at this, well, you know, we 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 would want to see a little bit more evidence. So if you put that in a in its context in relationship to where it's been, you know, these are likely spots where. You know, you're going to expect some resistance. So th there's the Vegas wave, the edge of the median line. So that would be kind of place where you might see some resistance. Of course, we'd pull from the swing high to swing low, looking for the 50. Those are all contenders here, but this is starting to show evidence of potentially a low in, at least against the dollar. If we look at it against Bitcoin, not as pretty but we've got a pretty well established range here. So I'm pulling all the way back from the lowest low that I can. I'm on a daily here. So we, you know, we're, we're, we're stuck in a range between two fibs. So from the absolute low to our absolute high, here's the 61865 window. You know, it's, it's, it's pulling through the Vegas wave and then it's going up. It's touching that, that little pocket here. So this is just absolutely, I mean, I, I suppose you could make the case that you've got an established range. You could be a buyer here on the assumption that we're, we're back to support. But, you know, that's that's not good enough for me, considering how ugly this is and I don't have great subdivision. Um, you know, but there are people that will will wait for this and trade this with a tight stop. You know, maybe give it a little give it a little room underneath the six five since it's, it has demonstrated that it can wick through. I think it's much more tradable against the dollar. So many people, you know, I, I get a lot of commentary saying, hey, I love what you're doing here. But could you please show me these against the, the I, I, pardon me, against Bitcoin? Tell you the truth, I don't care what they're spread against. I, I, ju I just want to make money. So, you know, it, if the pattern is there against the dollar and not against Bitcoin, I, I, I'm certainly not going to hesitate to take the trade against the dollar. It's just not here against Bitcoin. Right? So, you know, that 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 if 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 we start to break here and we get a little pop-up here, then, of course, you know, that's that's certainly an option. That's the more strategic way to do it. Establish the pivot. I mean, look at the reaction we got last time that we were down here. Right. Substantial, right? So I'm not saying that this isn't a tradable event here. I'm just saying if you're taking that, you know, you want to be tight with the stop, right? Very, very tight with the stop. So if you want to nibble at it, I wouldn't be, you know, going large there. But you, you could, you could make a play on that, looking for that little pop. Maybe you, you, you bank a little profit and then use that for the reload on the inevitable retracement because you will get one. You will get one. Then you're, you know, you're, you're going in a second time with profits with house money tradable but you know it's not the trade i would take when when i've got this looking so much better over here against the dollar that is a lot of data that's that's putting the puzzle together to see can i get a hard pivot there does that make sense do i have all the components i'm looking for to show me that i've got a i've got a pivot i can work with all right that's it for now guys